down. Hi, my name is Ortaria Pittman, and the other voice that you'll hear in the recording is my cousin, Lisa Williams. We are coming um, with another lesson here. This one is actually entitled uh, Numerology, Astrology, and Signs and Wonders. Um, so we want to know what does God say regarding uh, when people desire to worship? Uh, you know, these uh, creations. So um, we always use the Bible as our standard as Christians. Uh, so God is the only one that can tell us uh, more about how he feels, you know, with this type of a practice. People today, they uh, use astrology, numerology, and even worship uh, of the elements. So that's what we're going to dive into uh, today. So before we get started, um, let's just kind of look at some definitions. You know, astrology is defined as, as being the divination of the influences of the stars and the planets on human affairs and or terrestrial events, you know, based off of their positions, uh, you know, in the sky or, or aspects. And, um, you know, that is a man-made uh, concept. Um, God did not, you know, tell us anything, you know, to, to use the elements in this way. Okay. And then you have numerology. Uh, numerology is, is, is very, very similar because, um, they're using numbers in a divine way or a mystical way, uh, you know, to, um, kind of foretell events, um, or, you know, there, in, in a sense, it's kind of a, a worshiping, um, aspect to it because a lot of people, or they call them mediums, or psychics, or, you know, I, I forget the names that they all use today, but spiritual readers and things of that nature, they use a lot of numerology, um, because people have always kind of thought that numbers can um, be hidden in words and messages and decode messages and things of that nature. Um, so that is another, you know, worship practice that we see, you know, heavily in the 21st century. Um, another practice, uh, you know, that we're going to kind of talk about here is going to be just a general worship of the elements, you know, any of the four substances that make up, you know, the physical universe, you know, the air, the water, fire, you know, earth, all of those things. People have made movies about this and, you know, some, some people call them tree huggers, you know, uh, you know, the, the people who are very, very passionate, you know, about the earth and things of that nature, but, and, and that's okay to be, you know, passionate about the earth, but at the same time, we cannot make it a worship practice. We cannot worship mother nature or we cannot, you know, pay homage, you know, to, to the earth or the elements or anything thereof. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what God said, uh, these things were designed to be used for, you know, on his earth. He would know best being the creator. So my cousin is going to read to us, uh, in the beginning here, Genesis one, um, starting in verse 14 and she'll unmute <laughs> Genesis chapter one uh, beginning at verses 14 to 20 and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them <clears throat> be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Perfect. Yes. So here, thank you so much, cousin. Uh, so, so here, what we're talking about is the element that were created for a specific purpose. Um, what we don't see in these scriptures is any verse that says we are to celebrate, worship, or commemorate the elements. Okay. The elements are just a property that was created to sustain life you know, on earth primarily. Yes, they are magnificent. And, you know, if you wish to pay uh, homage 
about them. You must give all credit to the creator who created them. It's really a disservice if if we try to do anything other than that because it diminishes, you know, from the creator, you know, if you only uh, focus on the creation, you know, the, um, you only get like a, a piece of the story. If you want the full picture, then you must credit, you know, the, the creator um, in order to, to be proper. Uh, so that's, that's basically, you know, what, what we need to understand here. God himself said that in these scriptures that we just read, he gives us the why as to why he made, you know, these elements like this. Uh, the, the lights were just, you know, to let us know that it's, it's daytime and to, and to let like the plant life and <clears throat> the animal kingdom and, you know, all things that exist on the earth. Uh, you know, a, a, a day where, it, you know, you should be active, get the sun rays, that sort of thing. And then at nighttime is when you should rest um, and or, you know, um, have some break from the sun rays. Uh, so these elements were put here, you know, for the inhabitants of the earth, um, not not to to be worshipped or you know, anything uh, of the sort. They, you know, and, and the, the specific purposes that he is, is telling us here is that, you know, the, in, in essence, this is for man, you know, or humans, you know, because um, we, we need the, the sun. We need, uh, you know, I, I forget which doctor is a popular doctor that talks about this, but a lot of our vitamin D, you know, comes from the sun. Um, so, so the human body needs, you know, sun too much sun, then, you know, that's a bad thing and it will start to break the body down. Um, but just enough sun will sustain, you know, the, um, the vitamins that we need in our, in our bodies. And this is, and that's the same truth for the, the, the animal kingdom, the plant life, the files of the air, you know, the sea, if it was just too much sun, we wouldn't even have seas because they would dry out, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, we're going to we're going to dive in a little bit further uh, to to get more understanding uh, on this concept. Um, Psalms 19, my, my cousin is going to to read this verse uh, for us um, in, in the book of uh, Psalms here. I really love the way that it describes, you know, the creation uh, that God created. They are magnificent. Um, but let's let's see what Psalms has to say about, you know, so, uh, some of the elements here. So my cousin is going to read to us Psalm 19. OK, so do you want the whole of 19 or do you want just the first? That's usually just the first. Psalms 19. Yeah, just the just the first. OK. Psalm 19 and verse one, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showed his handiwork. Yes. So <clears throat> here we understand what the scripture is saying. The scripture is clearly just saying um, that everything that God created, it, it gives homage to the creator because it's so magnificent. The human body is built up of many, many different systems. Uh, the galaxies are built up of many galactic systems, you know, that hold them in place, hold them together, and they, you know, rotate around, you know, like they're supposed to. Um, and they don't bump into each other, you know, or collide into each other, you know, because of the rules that God has, has set forth. So I really like how Psalms gives us an, uh, a, a really good understanding that it's not really about the elements themselves. It's about the glory that goes to God, the creator of these elements, you know, as, as wide as the eye can see, you know, in the in the sky realm, you know, as far up as, as you can see, we should be paying homage and giving glory to God. Uh, so this verse is telling us that the creation, uh, you know, it, it, it exemplifies the magnificence of our Lord. You know, uh, again, if you pay homage to anything that he created instead of him, then you diminish from his splendor. You know, this can this can actually be seen as an insult in many instances uh, to God. You know, now we're not talking about like admiring, 
uh, God and being thankful for his creation. That's totally different and that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. What we're talking about is when people create a doctrine around the creations that God has created. You know, so if you want to um, use astrology, you know, as like your guide or, or numerology as your guide, then, you know, you have actually replaced God with his creation. And that's where you, you know, fall into trouble. So other ways that we know that worship to astrology, numerology, and anything created by God um, is wrong is because God said we are not authorized to worship idols or anything, you know, that was created. Okay. We're going to um, dive into Romans 1 uh, and 22. And my cousin is going to read 22 through 25. And we're going to get like a, a, a good understanding of, of this particular principle that we're talking about. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uh, uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own body between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature? more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. So we see in this chapter, Paul is writing to warn this church that it's foolish to worship anything other than God. As a result, there are consequences where a separation from God will happen. And when God separates himself, uh, this leaves them in their sins and it, and it, and it, and it dishonors and it is labeling them as fools, okay? Um, so here, you know, they actually were using, and I'm, I'm sure we have seen this in many instances, you know, with, um, I forget exactly, totem poles and things of that nature. They will pay homage to birds. You know, some of them are eagles. Um, you know, some of them are alligators or, or you know, in, in, in Egyptian culture, uh, you will see, you know, how they use, you know, different God heads, you know, on, on like bodies, I guess, um, they kind of mix them together and they call that a deity or, you know, or something to that effect. And God says, this is foolish. Uh, God says that when you do that, uh, you, you actually are a fool. Uh, because you are worshiping something that was created, you know, by your own hands or, or, you know, even worse to, to, to worship something that he created, you know, for your purpose. Um, so when you do that, uh, you, you turn the truth into a lie, you know, so the, so the original um, intent, you know, for these things you, you pervert them and you change their, you know, that God did not intend. Okay. Uh, and if you actually do that, then, you know, God is not pleased. When Paul was in Athens, we get a really good understanding as to, you know, what this, what this looks like, you know, even more because um, here in Athens, the Athenians, they believed in, you know, they believed in like, polytheism. They believed in multiple, multiple, you know, gods or deities or, you know, divine beings or, or whatever the case may be. And so they did not want to offend any ones that they may not know. Um, so when, when Paul was there, he saw many statues and idols that were dedicated, you know, to all of these fictitious gods with a little G. Um, and as Paul is walking and he's looking, you know, at, you know, this particular uh, place where all the idols were, were lined up with the judgment for this. And, uh, you know, we actually can see the judgment, the synopsis of this judgment um, in the following scriptures that we're going to go to next. So join us in um, Acts 17. My cousin is going to start at verse uh, 23. 
Okay. Uh, Acts 17, starting with verse 23. For as I pass by and beheld your devotions, I find an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Okay. Go to the next one for me. Okay. Uh, 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Keep going. 25. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he give it to all life and breath and all things. Thank you. And Paul is saying to these uh, people, you are very religious, you know, because you've thought this through. Um, you know, you, you have created all these idols and statues and, you know, devotions uh, to the elements and all of these things that they have thought about in their mind. Um, you know, they try to pay homage to it. And then, you know, at the end, he sees one that says, you know, to the unknown God. So they didn't want to offend, you know, any gods that they didn't know about. So therefore they said to the unknown God. But what they didn't understand was that there is uh, only one God. So Paul is going to educate them on this. And this is why he's declaring God uh, to them. So their polytheism is incorrect because there's only one God, okay? We were never authorized or given instruction from God to celebrate, pay homage to, worship, or, you know I me, mean, elevate anything that he created. The scriptures all point to the opposite of that. Uh, like he is saying here, God, the true God, that made the world and all the things that are in it. He is the Lord of both heaven and earth. And he does not live in anything that is made by man's hands. Or he doesn't even live in anything that he created here on this earthly realm. You know, he is not confined, uh, you know, in any way, shape or form. Or else he would not be God. And so as a result, he does not want to be worshiped by anything that was created by man's hands. And, and rightfully so, as Paul is explaining, the reason why is because he does not need that. Man was not there when he created the world. He did not ask man to help him in any way, shape or form. He did not even ask man's opinion because man didn't even exist when God created all of these things. It wasn't until the sixth day of creation that man was created. So all of these elements, you know, that some people pay homage to and worship, you know, they were designed to be used for this earth. And that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. God doesn't need anything. As a matter of fact, he gives all things, including life, breath, and the rules that we was creating the world. He explained to us, um, you know, what these things that he was creating were going to be used for. And if you go back through, you know, whenever you get some extra time, if you go back through the book of Genesis, so Genesis 1, 2, 3, and 4, if you just read those chapters, God himself explains um, why, you know, the, the things that were created were created. And, you know, a big, large part of that was just so that we would be able to tell time, so that we would uh, be able to uh, know the seasons uh, so that we will be able to, you know, protect ourselves, you know, from the elements, uh, you know, because of course, as we know now, um, 
the higher you are in the north, uh, that elevation is going to change. It snows quite a bit in the north versus in the south, you know, closer to the equator. You know, so you have to understand how to protect yourself from the elements. And a lot of the elements that he created, you know, were for that purpose so that you would know the signs of the seasons that were coming so that you would know, you know, um, what to do. Okay. So we're going to have a part two um, to this uh, lesson, but we want to leave you, you know, with a few verses here um, to kind of sum up, you know, what we are talking about today. So God is a jealous God and he only wants what he wants. He only deserves what he wants. He is the source of everything and he forever will be our master, our king. And so he deserves, uh, you know, everything that he asks for. And here, we're going to just um, leave you with a few scriptures uh, to kind of help you to understand a little bit more about why God is the only one that should be worshipped. So um, my cousin is going to read Deuteronomy 6, um, and then she will read uh, 13 through 14. And let's just listen uh, to what God has to tell us um, about his majesty. Again, that was Deuteronomy 6, 13 through 14. Okay. Thou shalt fear the Lord. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what culture is around you. Um, you know, back then the Egyptians were, you know, rounded about and God is telling the people of that day, it doesn't matter what they do, you know, because they have already decided that they don't want to worship God. And so you, you know, stay pure is what he's trying to tell the people. And it's the same thing that he's telling us today. It doesn't matter if people around us, scientists included, um, decide to, you know, rely on astrology or numerology or other signs and elements, you know, for their belief system. God is telling us today to hold true to him because there is no other truth than him. And so... Another scripture that we're going to go to is also found in Deuteronomy. And um, he, this just, you know, further talks about like God's majesty. So do, we're going to um, read Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Uh, I think she cut out a little bit. Uh, you should have, um, yeah, so God is saying here, you will have no other gods before me because there aren't any other gods. So don't even create any. Don't, don't try, you know, to, to worship anything else. I am all that you need. Okay. Uh, and in Exodus 20 and three, it says the same thing. You shall have no other gods before me. These are commandments that never changed. Even to this day, this holds true. Um, in the new Testament, Luke four and eight, Jesus answered him and said, it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. So that further confirms that God is the only authority that we are to worship, nothing and no one else. Okay, Isaiah 42 and eight, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. So in part two, we're going to um, expound on this particular topic and get maybe in further into specifics of astrology, numerology, and other 
uh, signs and symbols that people, you know, rely on. You know, there, there was a civilization called the Mayans who heavily relied on numerology, um, you know, to predict the end of the world. Uh, well, we all know that that day came and went and we're still here. Um, so, you know, that just further confirms uh, what God is saying here. You know, you serve God only. We worship God only. And him is who we depend on and rely on. Um, it's not the elements. It's not, you know, uh, any signs or wonders or anything like that. Um, it's not idols. You know, it's, it's not our own selves. It's God is, is, is who we need and who we need to trust. So we appreciate you for listening for your time. Um, and we pray that we will be able to come back and um, provide you with uh, some edifying things here. And until then, we love you. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful week.